Howdy heroes, this video might not be pertinent anymore, but with much of the focus on DSP's endless disasters of 2023, there was a subject that went rather overlooked. His gameplay. It was all trash. But I want to discuss what I think his worst gaming moment was for 2023. It was stiff competition. He got bonked by several heroic detractors, slammed his controller, and foamed at the mouth. But this overlooked moment was godlike because it delivered on a lot of DSP's brain rot. What game? What moment? Starfield. Yes, the flop of the year gave us this year's best DSP lobotomy gameplay moment. I have to give you a warning of spoilers as I discuss what went off. I don't really need to tell you the whole story, but I will be discussing the important character in the story, so if you even remotely care about the story of Starfield, uh, thank you for making it this far. It all started with this guy. This is the Hunter, the primary antagonist. He attacks your HQ and you're tasked with defending against him, sort of. Let's roll our first clip. Uh, oh, what the fuck? He ignored all of the bullets because he was in a fucking animation? What kind of piece of shit is this? He ignored all the bullets. What a piece of dog shit. Why would it do that? Well, fuck that. It's shocking that DSP had been playing games this long and still doesn't understand basic fundamentals of game design. The dude was clearly in the middle of an animation. Most such animations that are scripted events, they tend to have the characters be invincible. This numbskull dumped his entire magazine to deduce what any normal person would deduce in one to five bullets. But thankfully he saves guns. I think of the last couple years, few hypocrisies in gameplay attitude gets more abused or justified than DSP's feelings about save scumming. It comes up all the time. It was the majority of his Oblivion playthrough. It doesn't make it's any really sense. Bad. The system doesn't the make system sense. The system it, it just doesn't system seem consistent. And in equal measure, he browbeats people, saying he never does it except when he has a great reason to. He insists you should let a game play out with your choices. Except he doesn't. Shouldn't he live with the choice of dumping all his ammo like an idiot? Shouldn't he have to go buy some more? Shouldn't he have to go scrounge for some more? Finally he downs him, but not really. This is your first clue that you shouldn't keep engaging this guy. The other characters finally flee and DSP runs after them. The game is clearly telling him to run from the encounter, but as DSP makes clear, he's a badass who doesn't afraid of nothing. That scared him off. He, did you... can Starborn even die? It might be a trick. We better keep moving. I have all the artifacts. Everyone follow me. <laughs> There's an old escape tunnel to the Well District. Damn! Yo, I liquefied the motherfucker. He didn't even have a chance to fire a weapon. <laughs> he and his entourage next go through an underground area that is a residential commercial district. The hunter reappears, again signaling to any reasonable perceptive person that he is an unbeatable opponent. But let's see how a professional streamer and video game player handles the scenario. Oh, hi! Move, 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 move! I just fill him up. Sorry, child. I can't move. That's right. A grenade launcher. In a confined underground area filled with civilians. This is the stupid that Phil possesses that is almost impressive. This is Zap Brannigan energy. The terrorist is in an underground shopping mall crawling with helpless people. Kiff, fetch my grenade launcher. 
and like Brannigan would, Philo obliterates multiple innocent people while not even harming the target. Wrong time, wrong place, poor civvies. That place and time? Being in front of Phil when he has a gun. Only a 15,000 bounty, it's fine. It's not a big deal. I can deal with that later. At this point, Phil's hopelessly inbred synapses fire. He finally deduces that the dude is made of pure unkilotanium. He flees with this party to his ship per the narrative. And then we get this. The dude's name was Scorpius? It's the most generic name ever. Scorpius. Okay, we have to- oh, fuck. We have to leave. Uh, we're in trouble. We're getting shot in the ass. So what do I do? How do I get out of here? This is not good. We are under attack, and I don't know what to do. And we're about to die. Everyone is aggro to us. Everyone in the universe is aggro. I just want to escape. I don't know how. They're all after me. I'm gonna die. What was I supposed to do? I'm gonna die now. Everyone aggro to me. For fuck. I don't want to fight you. This is really stupid. The entire Gold Bank fleet wants to dead. Yeah. Fuck this game. This is pretty stupid. But come on now. Any good joke is funny multiple times. You cannot fast travel during combat. Then how do I leave? How do I get out of here if I can't fast travel? How do I grab drive? Right? The eye, right? There's the eye. So how do I do it? I'm in combat already and I can't leave. So what am I supposed to do? We'll figure it out on another day, it's just stupid. And then we get DSP lobotomy cope and rationalization. There was no reason for me to have a giant bounty on my head. It's just dumb. So, fuck this and we'll have to figure it out another day because I'm out of time and I'm not gonna sit here all night trying to figure this fucking shit out. It sucks. It really does, it's shitty. It was a cool story sequence completely ruined by awful gameplay mechanics. There shouldn't be a giant bounty on my head. They should give you an exception in this case since you were forced to run from this guy for the story. You should be given a, a pass so that you can fucking just do the next part of the story instead of having to fuck around with their broken ass, poorly made game. Yes, you heard that right. DSP wants to be above consequences. In game and off of game, I presume. And DSP is a logical dude, so let me explain logically. Games have progressed since the 80s. They now tell stories and narratives. Most of the narrative of games follows the logic you would intuit from what a reasonable person would do. A reasonable person would have deduced that killing the guy was not an option. A reasonable person wouldn't whip out a grenade launcher and blow away innocent civilians. And a reasonable person would understand why 20 ships shot the shit out of them. Furthermore, Mr. Logical, look at it from the NPC's perspective. In Starfield, your character is not really seen as anything special by the masses. Even upon joining factions and completing quests, you're not seen as some chosen one like the Dragonborn. Furthermore, the hunter is not a known adversary or infamous terrorist. Nobody knows who this dude is. For the people in the residential area, it looked like two random maniacs shooting up the place. They were shooting each other with no concern for who they killed in the crossfire. Furthermore, when you left the planet, 
Why wouldn't ships try and take you down? Especially when they see you pull up to an unknown spaceship of likely hostile origin and appear to talk to it. Say what you will about the AI of Starfield, but it all makes complete sense here. The moment highlights the intense narcissism and main character syndrome DSP has. Instead of thinking for one second that he dealt with the situation poorly, he admonishes the game developers for not permitting him to do whatever he wanted at all times with no consequences. Sounds like his real life perspective. He should be allowed to do anything and suffer maybe a warning at worst. I'm blown away that he insists the game should have made some special consideration for the circumstances and not let him rack up a bounty. So games shouldn't have consequences? The devs should turn off systems whenever? Where would they decide to turn it off? Whenever you could accidentally take out an innocent? If you're Phil, that would mean turning it off completely. At any moment, Phil can pick up a controller and slaughter civilians at a professional level. Furthermore, this is a Bethesda game. This has almost always been a thing. The fuzz is always on your ass for the most minor of infractions. That's why the stop criminal scum meme became a thing. They're on your ass if you kill a chicken without a permit, so they'll gun your ass down for sending random civilians to the morgue. Because DSP is the gag gift that keeps on giving, he doubles down hard on being unfathomably stupid on his next pre-stream. Basically, there's a situation in the game where someone's out to get you, and you have to escape, but you don't know at first that this enemy, if you can believe it, is invincible. You think, oh, maybe I can fight them. So you start pulling out weapons and shooting, and what ends up happening is you're, you're in the middle of a city when you're doing this, so there's collateral damage that's unavoidable. It's just going to happen. There's nothing you can do about it. You don't know you're supposed to be running and escaping. You think maybe you could fight this thing. So I escape and then come to find out, like, the entirety of the galaxy hates me. Oh, well, because you unloaded in the middle of that city, uh, there was collateral damage. Now there's a million bounties on your head and everyone wants you dead. And I'm like, now wait a minute. Let's think about this for a second, okay? This is a actual main story beat, a main story plot line in the game that this segment happens. It's scripted that this happens, that you're hunted and something's coming after you and you have to escape. But at first, you don't know you have to escape. So, you, you, of course, the first thing you're going to think about is let me try to fight and see if I can, you know, defend myself. <clears throat> Everyone's going to do this. So why not, during this portion of the game, have a special element where you don't get bounties for fighting the thing because you're fighting it in a city. I just want you to think about how stupid that is. They knew this was a major part of the plot. They knew that most people would probably try to at least once fight back. And instead of saying, okay, let's suspend this, this element. This isn't someone outright committing a crime in the city. This is someone trying to defend themselves because there's a, you know something after them. And you let, let's just make it so that this part of the game is fun. It's fast-paced. You try to fight it, you fail, then you run on to the next part of the story. No, that was too hard for Bethesda. That would actually have taken some effort to kind of like code that into the game. So instead, still have all the bounties and all the, the, the systems in place as if this story element isn't happening, ignoring it, right? Like, oh, someone's defending themselves from something trying to kill them. You know, oh, they committed heinous crimes. What are you talking about? The, the, you know, this thing was killing everything. So what are you talking... Like, what the fuck? It's just really badly done, in my opinion. Just like a lot of parts of this game. It feels like they had they laid the groundwork for something good, but they only did, like, the very base-level work, and they never bothered to go anything past that base level of, of understanding of what the game should have been. You know, just to spend the fucking bounty system for five minutes during the segment. Then you could play through it, and then reinstate it after the segment's over. Is that so hard? Like, really, is that so fucking hard? It's like game programming 101. I could have easily told you, as a game director, I could have told you, do that, this makes sense. It makes the game fun. But I guess that's not what they were going for. Fun? Oh, they don't want that in Starfield. The game is badly designed for not allowing DSP to win. Why do game testers and QA departments even exist? Have DSP play your game. If he wins, grand. Print it. Great game. He loses? How dare you make trash? Fix your shit, Howard. Or... Er other Howard. To book in the entire experience, we have him save scumming his way out of the problem. What happened to living with the consequences? What am I saying? Phil is defined by his resistance to accept consequences. Alright, so we, we held off the intruder who was called the Hunter, but then what happened was is we, he kept following us through the city of New Atlantis, and I thought, oh, we'll just keep fighting him or whatever, right? Well, no, you can't. If you keep fighting him, uh, you end up hurting all this collateral damage and you hurt all these people right so 
it was messed up. And I was like, so what do we do? So what I've done is I reloaded. And I'm trying to see where we are. I don't know. Nah, it looks like, uh... So what I'm trying to figure out here is, do we have this crazy bounty on our heads or not? Apparently, I still have it. All right, so... Apparently, I still have it. Let's go back to the well. One of these is going to be the autosave before all that happens. No? Yes. We just left the lodge. Okay. So now we shouldn't have the bounty. Let's check that, right? Status. Crime. Yes, we don't have it anymore. So this is before the bounty. Okay. So now we can get the hell out of here. I don't know if he's gone, but we can't risk it. Get to the ship! And that was my submission for the worst gameplay moment of 2023. 2024 is already shaping up to be a great year for DSP salt and stupidity. Your rage quit Resident Evil 0 for the exact same reason. I guess the takeaway message from this is, if you're a game dev, don't let your player lose or face consequences in any way. Do a better job making your game. And this doesn't come from me. This comes from a professional with 15 years experience being terrible in video games.